Well, I know two news videos in the same week is quite a bit, but there's just so much freaking news going on. And this is just one of the things that might be extremely important. RTX 40 series super GPUs. We've got pricing and performance leaked, and these things genuinely blew me away. I did not think they're gonna be as good as they possibly could be. So let's jump in. Now, why do these graphics cards matter? This generation of graphics cards has been overwhelmingly disappointing to a lot of people. That is going to do it for our final best of GPUs video of 2023. In fact, it's our first and final of the year. And I guess that speaks to just how trashed here the current generation of GPUs is. It's hard to get excited about what kind of cards are coming out because they're just not that good of value. So these RTX 40 series super cards genuinely might be good value in something that we could actually get excited about. But if you're still not convinced that these 40 series super cards are coming out, a bunch of AIB board partners have a bunch of like leaked models of graphics cards. So this is a 4070 super from Zotac, out from Gigabyte and NO3D palette graphics card, which is a 4080 super. There, there's just, there's so many cards that are out here at this point in time. And the fact that if you scroll down this page, that there's literally specs unveiled for these cards is where this starts to get really interesting. So now we can actually put these specs into context with a little bit of evidence to see what's actually going down. Now let's start off first with the RTX 4080 Super. This is a card that I've been pretty scared about how it's going to perform. CUDA core count, generally speaking, this is going to show you how fast a graphics card is going to perform from NVIDIA. The, these are pretty similar. There's like a 400 CUDA core difference between them. It has the same amount of VRAM, and the same amount of power. So you would think that this 4080 Super is going to perform really similar to the original 4080. But that all changed when I saw how much this card actually costs. Now, if you go to this leak, then this is obviously this isn't guaranteed at this point in time. But at the same time, because these cards are so like close to a launch day, I'll, I'll move my camera over so you guys can see this. It wouldn't surprise me if these prices are completely correct. This is what surprised me. The RTX 4080 Super at one thousand dollars that's pretty damn cool because when you look at the original 4080 this card has basically been mocked so much over time because of how poor value it is and stuff in the market and it's because this card launched for twelve hundred dollars but yeah that's what surprised me is that nvidia is going to be undercutting their 4080 now i wish this was still cheaper i wish the 4080 super was eight hundred dollars right now but you know in the market that we're in at least it's something they're, they're undercutting their other card. What's really interesting too, is what kind of pressure that's going to put on the market. So the 4080 right now, like you could, you, you could say that, like, oh, the 4080 costs less now because it's been a while since it launched and everything. No, this card is still costing around $1,160. And the new 4080 Super is going to perform really similar based off the specs and is going to be coming on at a thousand dollars and this pricing has not adjusted to affect this these are the lowest price cards to the highest price ones you can see that they jump up pretty quickly so 4080s right now maybe it's possible nvidia isn't going to be making the original 4080 anymore and to me that would kind of make sense they're making a card that's basically the same thing but it's coming in at a cheaper price they might be phasing out the original rtx 4080 now this is just like theoretical on my end, I can't really guarantee this is going to happen because this might make sense that they don't want to make the original 4080 anymore because of how much this card was overpriced and it didn't actually sell that well. A lot of people didn't buy the 4080. It was mainly seen as an upsell to get the 4090 at $1,600 which really gave this bad this card a bad impression. Basically what Nvidia could be doing here is launching a 4080 Super that it performs really similar but costs $1000 to improve the the perception of the 4080 and get people excited about this card again. Nvidia is kind of getting the best of both worlds here. So we'll see how it goes, but that's something I, I really do think could happen. And then we also have to look at what other cards are on the market. So according to like performance and rasterization performance between these cards, the 4080 performs really similar to the 7900 XTX, which is still on the market right now for $960. So what we could see is if this card is the new 4080 Super is going to come in at thousand dollars, it is going to put pricing pressure on the 7900 XTX from AMD. There's no way that these can cost the same because at that price point, you're getting DLSS and better ray tracing performance on the 4080 Super. Uh, this is a flash sale 
of the 7900 XTX, suddenly it dropped to $800. It, the deal is gone now, you can't buy this anymore. So what we could see is a pretty decent price cut to the 7900 XTX. And that would also mean that the 7900 XT, which comes below it, is gonna, like that couldn't be, $760 when the upgrade to it costs $800. So this card might go down in price too. We're going to see a huge cascade of pricing adjustments to the market. And the reason I think the XTX actually might end up sitting around that $800 price point, according to like we saw this, this, this is a price adjustment. These cards have generally always been around $200 of gap in terms of price. And it seems like AMD has been trying to maintain that ever since they launched. The 4080 Super is going to be way more interesting than I, I ever thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be absolutely trash because I thought they're going to charge more than the original 4080 for this card. So this is this 40 series super launch. This is why I'm talking about this. This is going to be way more interesting than a lot of us probably ever thought it was going to be. And this might cause a lot of pricing adjustments down the line. Now, the next big card in this is the RTX 4070 Ti Super with all of the freaking suffixes or whatever the modifiers to the name. Now, the original 4070 Ti, I've talked about this in the in the past, was really disappointing at its price point of around $800 at launch. And that's mainly because of the 12 gigabytes of VRAM that this card had and a lot of like bigger budget AAA games. We're seeing them push 12 gigabytes of VRAM right now. What would that mean in three to four years? You just don't want to buy an $800 card and not be able to play the latest games three to four years down the line. I could see it really being an issue. And that's why the 4070 Super, a 4070 Ti Super, sorry, there's too many. I'm going to have to say this a lot and I'm going to get really confused, is having 16 gigabytes of VRAM. There's the VRAM, but it's going to have significantly more CUDA cores, which means it's going to perform better than the original 4070 Ti. We could be seeing 10 to 15% more performance plus the extra VRAM. So we're seeing a pretty significant upgrade with the 4070 Ti Super, more than I ever thought it was going to be. This makes it even more interesting is what price is this going to come in at? And according to this leak in this rumor, is that the 4070 Ti Super is going to be costing $800. And compared to the original card that also MSRP'd at $800, at least they're not raising the price of this card to compensate for the performance and the VRAM and all that good stuff. So where is the 4070 Ti right now in the market? Because the MSRP is completely different from what it actually costs. It's costing about $740 in terms of average street price, maybe $750 or somewhere around that price. This is gonna have to come down to be attractive because I think a lot of people will just pay 50 to $60 more to secure the extra four gigabytes of VRAM to future-proof their card. Yeah, the 4070 Ti, if it doesn't adjust its pricing, is probably gonna be dead. And that mainly is going to also be because of the RTX 4070 Super. This card is going to maybe kill the 4070 Ti. And that is because according to leaked performance and according to the specs here, you see the CUDA core count is very similar at 7,680 7, on the 4070 Ti and 7,168 on these 4070 Super. And they sell the same amount of VRAM and all that stuff. And according to leaked benchmarks, this is in Geekbench. So this is a synthetic benchmark that was, I'm getting this from videocards.com here. And all my links are in the description to everything if you want to see the, uh, what, what my sources are here. They're saying in Geekbench, which doesn't really reflect real world gaming performance or anything like that, but it is give you a rough estimate of how fast this card generally could be. We could see that the 4070 Super is 93% the performance of the 4070 Ti or 96% the performance of the 4070 Ti. And when you see what the leaked price of the 4070 Super is, we're seeing this might cost $600. So if we look at the, the pricing of the 4070 Ti again, if this new 4070 Super with the same VRAM, similar amount of CUDA cores is coming at $600, but the 4070 Ti is $740. I mean, the 4070 Super is gonna kill the card. Like it's straight up going to kill it. So this, this pricing is going to have to change significantly for the 4070 Ti. So if you are interested in buying a 4070 Ti, but this pricing was too high, I'd definitely wait for this 40 series Super cards to actually launch and 
allow pricing to adjust itself naturally in the market before you'd be interested in that. But like, what about the original 4070, the card that kicked it all off? So now we have a 4070 Super, a 4070 Ti, and a 4070 Ti Super. We have so many modifiers on the same card, but what about, I just hit the mic, I'm sorry. But I think the original 4070 is going to be the only card in here that might not be replaced by the newer Super cards. This one might still have a place in the market. Okay, you can see that there's a significantly different number of CUDA cores here. And that means this card could be like 20% faster than the original 4070. According to Tech Power up here with a rough performance chart, the original 4070 versus the 4070 Ti, the 4070 Ti is about 24% faster. I mean, this is rough calculations and stuff, but you know, just for reference point, that would make sense that if the 4070 Super is about 20% faster than the 4070, then it's going to be really close to that 4070 Ti. And it's going to have about the same power draw and the same amount of VRAM. So still 12 gigabytes, which at this performance tier is probably fine. The 4070 Super is $600, like we were talking about before, according to this, this leak and rumor. And that is the same MSRP of the original 40. 70. The 4070 Super is going to be significantly faster than it, but costing $600, which is only $50 more than what the 4070 is going for on the market right now. So this actually makes me a little worried. Currently, I don't think this 4070 is going to drop price that significantly. It's possible it will, but Nvidia, that's because Nvidia's 4070 right now is actually their most competitive card in the market. And that's because AMD's 7800 XT, which performs really similar, but has a little bit more VRAM, so it's an argument to get it. Um, these cards are about the same price. There's an argument to make the Nvidia premium and get the DLSS and better ray tracing at this price point. So is if Nvidia is already getting good sales on 4070s at this price point, why would they adjust the price compared to AMD? Because they don't have to. If they're selling good, and this is their most competitive card, they don't need to change the price. What I'm worried then is, yes, this 4070 Super is faster and is going to be costing $50 more. I'm worried that this card actually might get more expensive over time. If the 4070 doesn't change, then people would probably pay more for the 4070 Super. And especially because it's going to be basically in terms of performance, almost replacing the 4070 Ti and with 12 gigabytes of VRAM and stuff being much cheaper, this card might get more expensive. And that's what I'm worried will happen in the long term. I'm hoping that this isn't the case. The thing that I would be most excited about is if the 4070 actually dropped price to around $500. That would be amazing, but I can't guarantee that. So that is basically the 40 series super graphics cards, but we can't forget about AMD at CES here. AMD is doing mainly a presentation about AI which if you're into AI, cool. Um, this is more for businesses and stuff like that. What is interesting though, even though it's mostly about AI, it seems like there is going, they're going to be announcing one graphics card and that is the RX 7600 XT, but it's supposed to launch at the end of January. So if this was an upgrade to the 7600, that card is costing around 260 to $270. We could see the 7600 XT costing around 300 to $350 but having 16 gigabytes of VRAM, which would be really exciting because we just don't get VRAM in the lower end section of the market. The only other card that's there that is actually genuinely decent value is the 6700 XT. So it could be really cool to see a 16 gigabyte card in this price class. And if it was as fast as the 6700 XT, I'm not saying that it would happen, but if it was as fast as this card, that'd be actually a pretty good value for the entry level market to have a bunch of VRAM. Lower end $300 is kind of crazy to say, but $300 is kind of low end, like considering the entire GPU market right now. I'm excited for this card. We'll have to see how it goes. And they might be announcing it on Monday, January 8th. And actually, if you guys want to join me, I'm going to be streaming a basically a reaction. We're gonna break down official pricing and specs and probably benchmarks from these companies like Nvidia and AMD are going to probably be revealed at that at their events 10 o'clock a.m eastern time on Monday January 8th so if you want to join for that you know just uh, think about that now on to another like a few other things in news this is mostly about GPU news the handheld gaming market has been basically taking off the Steam Deck kicked it off the Steam Deck OLED has been really amazing as of recently Asus made the ROG Ally Lenovo made the Legion Go 
there's a lot of handheld gaming PCs on the market right now. And it looks like MSI is going to be entering the handheld gaming market. If you're a fan of MSI, then maybe you'll like this product. It's going to be using Intel's actually mobile processors instead of AMD. Most AM, uh, like handhelds right now have been based on AMD. Intel has actually been working on new chips and made new mobile chips that are genuinely pretty good for a handheld. Well, to see how it goes on the mobile gaming market, I'm excited to see how this is. I've never even tried a handheld. I kind of want to get a Steam Deck, so I don't know. <laughs> Intel's 14th gen CPUs. It certainly doesn't deserve to be called a 14th generation. Sorry, I mean generation. 14900 KS. So the KS is basically like a bind, so a picked out chip that's particularly very good. So this is Intel's fastest processor. Intel has been struggling against AMD in terms of gaming market and, and power efficiency in CPUs. So we'll have to see how this even goes. So the last thing I want to talk about is AM4. So I actually am still on an AM4 system which means I got my motherboard back in 2017 and I'm still using the exact same motherboard. What's interesting is that AMD is still going to be launching another CPU for this outdated platform. They, they retired AM4 for AM5 just last year in 2020. Actually, not, not even last year. Couple years ago at this point, I guess. In 2022, they made AM5. What we're seeing is that new processors are still coming out for AM4. So if you still wanted to upgrade on that platform, it looks like a 5700X3D is going to be coming out on there. 5800X3D has been a great, great deal. Um, it has really good bank gaming performance and it is like pretty nice to just drop an upgrade on your system. Now, the 5700X3D. It's going to have the same amount of cores. Clock speed of the 5800X3D is going to be 4.5 gigahertz, whereas the 5700X3D is 4.1 gigahertz. So it's basically just a downclocked version of a 5800X3D with the same amount of cores. But it's interesting to see that they're still making CPUs for a dead platform. A lot of freaking GPU news. I've actually been, this is probably edited down, but I've been talking for well over an hour about GPUs and saying so many super cards and stuff like that. Again, if you want to join us for a live stream, I'm going to be live streaming the announcement of the 40 series super cards. They're probably going to be announced on January 8th. Now they don't say on Nvidia's thing. So I'm assuming that they probably are. There's so many leaks and rumors now. We know almost everything about them. So we're gonna be breaking down performance, uh, breaking down pricing, how it's gonna change the market. If you should or shouldn't get one at certain price points. An AMD's event starts at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So whatever time zone that works out for you is gonna be crazy. And we know a lot, of, but a lot of things about these cards now and the pricing was the biggest one to actually happen. This surprised me. I thought these cards were gonna be more expensive and crappy. They're not looking that bad. So let me know what you think about them in the comments. It's gonna shake up the market quite a bit. We've seen that the 7900 XTX might be dropping to $800. We don't know if this is true, but that seems pretty cool if that does end up happening. 7600 XT might be coming out, has 16 gigabytes of VRAM possibly. MSI is launching a handheld gaming PC to compete with Asus, Lenovo, and Steam, or Valve actually. Intel's 14900KS doesn't look all that exciting, but we'll see how that one goes. And then AMD is still releasing CPUs for AM4, which is a what a seven-year-old cpu platform now which is kind of crazy it will never die forever and ever and ever i hope you guys enjoyed you know obviously get ready for the live stream and stuff like that that'd be sick i'll see you guys there it's gonna be a fun time you guys have a good rest of your day i'll see you in the next video and uh peace